Hello and welcome to Business Today Television. I'm Siddharth Zarabi and you're watching Easynomics. On the show with me today, a very special guest, noted tax expert, tax guru, uh, and the past president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, Mr. Verjain, joins in to discuss a subject that could be in the headlines very soon, which is on Budget Day, 1st February 2023. And the subject is capital gains, both short term and long term, and the treatment that is currently available and what is likely to change. Earlier, uh, my colleague and Business Today Television special correspondent Karishma Asudani broke a story which I am going to quote to you uh, about what the government is thinking at this stage, specifically the CBDT and the Finance Ministry. Uh, they are undertaking a comprehensive analysis of India's capital gains regime as it has evolved over the years with various other countries and is considering possible modifications. What those modifications are is obviously something that we will have to wait for uh, in the budget, but we have some hints including an on record comment made by the CBDT chairman uh, earlier where he said that we need to change the taxation regime. According to uh, the officials that Karishma Asudani has uh, spoken to, they are saying that the changes need to be made to simplify the taxation architecture and they have also said that it could all happen possibly within two years, which could mean that it may not be a sudden thing, it could be gradual and graded. Uh, Mr. Jain, I have set the context of the topic and the story before you. Uh, to start with, can you explain what is the anomaly in our capital gains taxation regime which needs to be modified or changed uh, for 2023 and beyond? Uh, Siddharth, look, uh, uh, India has followed this capital gain policy till 2004 earlier where we had only two classes of the capital gain, short term and long term. But in the year 2004, we introduced security transaction tax and then we started modifying our capital gains tax structure, uh, exempting whatever is the long term capital gain arising on the capital market. And then in order to bring more and more investment, various concessions have been given over a period. With the result today, I think the capital gain tax structure of India has become too complex for anyone to understand and to implement and to comply with it. That's a challenge which has come up. So you have different model, different model of investment. You have mutual fund, mutual fund, debt fund, equity based fund. You have then uh, equity, and then you have pro house property, land and building. Then you have other than land and building, two years, three years. Then you have a special rate of what we call 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent and then surcharge depending upon the nature of the transaction. So, the base fundamental principle of capital gain is that one value appreciate of a capital asset to the extent it get neutralized by what we call inflation. So, that should not be taxed. What is beyond inflation, that's your real earning and that should be taxed. And looking to this aspect, I believe uh, there was a, some indication what can be the Indian tax structure on capital gain uh, in the direct tax code, uh, which probably has been abandoned, I think, as on date. We don't see any uh, right. <clears throat> direct tax code coming into force. But now I believe that likely what I think is it will be simplified and it can be divided into two, what used to be earlier. One is movable assets, another is immovable assets. And movable assets, wherever the assets are productive, so we have a fixed rate of 10% or 15%, that will be the rate. And where is the immovable assets, then we have a flat rate of 20% to 30%. So I believe, by and large, so much complexity, 111, 111A, 112, so many provisions have come into force, then security transaction tax. Looking to the way the capital market has grown over a period right. of appreciation, the SP has not served the purpose. That's the idea we look for. Um, Mr. Jain, uh, in your own place as a tax guru, as I call you, what are the changes that you would make considering that the Indian economy has uh, now uh, sort of moved out of the COVID phase, some sort of recovery has happened, the capital markets are booming, but like you said, capital gains are not just on uh, capital market transactions, but also on 
some other uh, asset classes. What should be the ideal approach? Because many people, uh, and even today, if we were to do a poll on this, are confused between short term, long term, real estate, three years, uh, uh, mutual fund, equity treatment, ULIP treatment. So it's it's quite a bit of a muddle. What would you suggest needs to be done to fix the entire regime? I, I would say to simplify it in the best possible way. One, when one my proposal would be that two year, less than two years is a short term and beyond two years is a long term. That's so simple. We don't make any distinction between any asset, movable, immovable. We simply say if you have held the capital asset for a period of more than two years, then it is long term and then it will be a short term. So simple the formula should be clear on that part. And in case it is a long term, then the tax rate will be two rates, one productive and non-productive. If it is a productive investment, then 10%. If it is non-productive, then it is 20%. That's a flat rate. And for a short term, no concession, stayed away 30%. That's the rate should be there. I believe ideally that can be the best model for the taxing the capital gain, what we think about it. Because okay. short term by and large is not really a capital gain. You make money by churning out. That's why it should be flat rate of 30%. There's no reason why concession rate should be applied to capital gain, short term capital gain. I want you to quickly explain one point. In terms of the rates, at this stage, uh, do you see the need to increase the rates or unify them and moderate them? See, idea is, I believe, to simplify and to remove complexity in the uh, capital gain tax structure, rate of capital gain, I don't think that's the idea. And that, I think that in the way back, I think 2018, we have already done that exercise where we have taxed our now capital gain arising on the uh, listed share. I don't think the objective at present looks to be to increase revenue. What can be an idea, I see, uh, Indian model has to be different than the advanced country. We must keep this in mind, developed nation, because US and Europe follow the different model. And they do not allow you, uh, if you uh, to carry over the increase in value as we do in India. If you have sold one asset and you have invested in a new asset, the capital gain get fully exempt. That we have not followed the model uh, in US and Europe in that way. Because India still being a developing nation, we need a large chunk of investment. Okay. And if you need a large chunk of investment, not only from FDI, FII, but from the Indian investors, small saving investors. So we need to encourage people to come more and more to the capital market. So we cannot uh, follow that model of developed nation. That's why I said ki, that in case it's more than two years, let's have a congestion rate of tax and that encourage people to invest more and more in India. That's the idea basically. The, the, that's a good point. And before I ask you the final point, I think uh, this is a good uh, issue that Mr. Vedjan is telling us about. Five years, ten years earlier, the institutional money would dominate our markets if we are only talking about the equity markets. Um, and of course, uh, 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 the overall share market, uh, which we would include the mutual fund industry as well. However, now because of the very large number of retail investors and retail investors sometimes coming together, uh, they are a big force and any change that the government of India, the finance ministry makes or proposes uh, will impact a lot of the Indian arm army. That's a very important point. Mr. Jain, before we wrap up this topic, I also want to ask you about the demand made by industry chambers about uh, a cut in the personal income tax uh, rate. 2019 saw a big corporate tax rate. Uh, the government tried to introduce an alternative income tax structure where minus exemptions, but that seems to have failed. So, what should be the finance minister's priorities when it comes to personal income tax? You know, frankly, Siddharth, I am as a tax consultant, I am of the view that Indian personal tax rates are fairly good and stable and reasonable, I will say. Uh, to ask further, it is just like Dil Mange more. that's I will say on that. Nothing on that. Uh, only only we can have a restructuring because now from 2.5 to 5 lakh is 5 percent, from 5 to 10 lakh it is 20 percent. So, the man maneuvering with the finance minister can do is a little bit in this string green that 5, 10, 15 percent, not beyond. You have rightly said the new model has not worked. 
uh, their new tax rate structure without exemption and deduction has not worked because an option has been given to every person to find out which uh, model suits better. And in India, we have a, a good number of tax exemption deduction, maybe standard deduction, maybe long, lifelong saving, ES, a PF and uh, NSC, etc. Uh, and, and I am frankly of the view that the exemption should continue because to a taxpayer, India do, do not provide any retirement benefit. And right. this is, is, he, is a one of the way to encourage taxpayer that, look, government will not be able to give you any benefit on retirement. But if you make saving right now, we will give you tax concession and that saving will be handed to you when you retire. So this is basically, in a way, giving a, some retirement benefit to the people who are paying taxes today. And at the time of old age and retirement, they may need some money. So that's a tax incentive being given. I am of the view that this should continue and should not discourage on that part. And personal tax rate, otherwise, are reasonably good. Only one thing can be that the surcharge is too high, 37%. That's That's, well, uh, the, those are important points. And let's see if the Modi government chooses the pre-election year to do some changes when it comes to tax and axing the tax. Or will we have to wait for mid-year or closer to the 2024 interim budget for uh, any changes. Remember, interim budgets uh, do not normally have such major changes because uh, they are just like votes or vote on account uh, and it is not possible for parliament to convene and pass the legislative proposals including changes to the finance bill. Therefore, we will see whether it will happen now or will there be uh, something that will be a uh, closer to election dhamaka. Mr. Vajjain, as always, thank you very much for your time on the show today. With that, it's a wrap on this episode of Easynomics. We'll be back with more. Do stay tuned in. Hello and welcome to Business Today Television. I'm Siddharth Zarabi and you're watching Easynomics, the show where we pick up subjects